As a business owner or leader, you may find yourself overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information that's available and constant decisions that need to be made. You may also find yourself overthinking many decisions, tasks or actions, leading to perhaps what feels overwhelming, maybe a bit stressful, and it might lead you to doubt your decisions too. You might even have had sleepless nights because you just can't switch your mind off. And whilst it's natural and advisable to think through a decision, it becomes overthinking when you just can't get out of your head, when you're going around and around and you're thinking about something for just far too long. And it's delaying you taking the action that you could have if you just have decided and moved on. After all, progress is always better than perfection. If you can relate to this feeling, you won't be alone. It's really common for people to get themselves in this place. Now, fortunately, there are some steps that you can take to stop overthinking and start taking control of your thoughts. And I'm going to share those with you in this video. So I've got five steps that you can start taking right now to help you combat overthinking. Make sure that you stay to the end of the video as step five is the most critical and most people never discover this. Hi, I'm Leanne Bridges, success coach, helping business owners and leaders to master their mindset and succeed in business and life with ease. So you might be wondering if you're an overthinker, first of all, you might question like what is a usual level of thinking to do and like whether you really need to do anything about overthinking. So let me first of all share five signs of overthinking with you and then I'll take you through the steps to combat it. So sign number one. You let negativity about outcomes build up within you. So you mainly focus on like what will go wrong and you notice a lot of negative self-talk about that. Sign number two, you might find yourself with paralysis by analysis. I wonder if you recognise that. So you're afraid that you might take the wrong decision. So take neither no decision at all. You really delay. I notice this most often with business owners when they want to take a new direction or a strategy in their business. What? happens is kind of like standing at the starting line of a race all the cars are ready to take off and you have to back one but you find that you just can't quite pick because you're not sure which is the fastest one and so you flip from decision decision car to car and before you know it you're still stuck at the starting line you've made no decision because you couldn't pick a car because you couldn't decide which was the fastest so you didn't take part in the race so sign number three you ruminate about the past. So you think about like what could have happened and what you should have done in certain circumstances or situations and find that you waste your energy and your thoughts on the past. Sign number four, you feel stressed or low. Overthinking can feel really stressful and you can often feel disappointed with yourself. All of that by ending in negative feelings and that can lead you to feeling a bit low. And sign number five, you worry about the future and perhaps you catastrophize what might happen, imagining the worst in most situations. And that means that you really struggle then to live in the moment. So those are some of the most common signs. And you might be now asking yourself, you know, is it worth investing time in changing? You know, you might wonder if changing and stopping all of the overthinking is actually worth it. Now, as an ex overthinker, I can reassure you that it is. You have so much more time and you can achieve so much more when you're not spending all that time and energy on all of that thinking. And it's also really bad for your health. Like repetitive negative thoughts that circle round and round in your head can lead to all sorts of problems in your body, like headaches, high blood pressure, sleep issues, or even anxiety, not to mention spoiling your enjoyment of everyday life. So let's explore five ways you can overcome overthinking. Number one, change your perspective. So the first step in overcoming overthinking is changing your perspective on the situation. It can be really easy for us to focus on the small details and just get lost in our own heads. But instead, try to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Ask yourself, like, what's the overall goal here? How does this task fit into my larger objectives? Now, this kind of thinking will help you to focus. So you spend less time and energy on worrying about insignificant details than you had before. Number two, manage your story. We're always telling ourselves a story about ourselves. One of the most common I hear is I'm a worrier. If you keep telling yourself you're a worrier, you'll feed the problem and worry even more. So you need to identify the negative stories you tell yourself about 
who you are and how you behave and switch your story to something more empowering, like I direct my emotions. Number three, develop healthy habits. So another great way to reduce overthinking is to develop healthy habits like regular exercise, eating really well and relaxing. All of these sorts of activities can help you clear your mind and will provide you with like a physical outlook for stress relief. So exercise has been proven to reduce anxiety symptoms that are closely linked with overthinking. And having a routine helps structure your day so that there's less time for rumination about tasks or decisions that you actually need to make later on in the day. Number four, reframe negative thoughts. It's important to reframe any negative thoughts that arise from overthinking situations into more positive ones. So instead of immediately assuming the worst case scenario in any given situation, actively challenge your thoughts. Challenge those thought patterns by considering other possibilities and their potential outcomes or solutions. Now, this will help you keep negative thoughts from dominating your thinking process and just allow you to approach a situation from all angles before making a decision rather than making snap judgments based on worry or concern or fear about like what might happen into the future. Number five, know the difference between fear and intuition. So your intuition is invaluable guidance in decision making. It's your deeper inner wisdom and it's often underrated. You know, you've often actually internally assimilated all the possibilities and made a subconscious decision about a situation. So when you listen to the power of your intuition, a decision often feels right and you feel really resistant to going the other way. It's a bit of an abstract concept, but when you say things like, or oh, reading between the lines here, or my gut reaction is, that's your intuition. Intuition is where you are drawn towards something, even if there's a risk, whereas fear is more of an avoiding feeling and behaviour. So you're taking a choice based on avoiding a negative outcome, like being disapproved of or disappointing someone or maybe being ridiculed. So the point here is that when you take notice of the difference between fear and intuition, you'll know when your gut is telling you something isn't right versus imposter syndrome holding you back. The thing is, overthinking can feel really stressful and it can lead us down this rabbit hole of rumination that takes up valuable time and energy that we could have invested elsewhere in our lives or in our business. But with some effort, we can learn to stop overthinking so that we regain control of our minds and live a more productive life filled with more meaningful moments instead of worrying about things that are beyond our control. By changing our perspective on situations, developing healthy habits like exercise and really reframing those negative thoughts into more positive, optimistic ones, we can improve our situation, reduce stress and make better decisions based on facts rather than snap assumptions or fear about future outcomes. But all that being said, stopping overthinking isn't something that people find easy to do alone. From experience, people need support to do this because many of the answers lie in your subconscious. And unless you know what you're doing, then it can be really hard to access that alone and to know how to make long lasting changes to the way that you're thinking. So look, if you want some more guidance on how to make fast and long lasting changes so that you stop overthinking and take decisive action in business and in your life, then there's a link to more resources to help you in the description for this video.